Hey everyone, AMR back again with another video. So in today's episode, by the title, you can probably tell, but we're going to be going over the five quarterbacks that you need to be looking out for in this NFL season. So it should come notice, like it should come to no surprise that there's basically going to be five quarterbacks that kind of stand out amongst the rest. There are going to be some discrepancies as to whether or not I should have included someone over another person, but at the end of the day, it is my end. Uh, it is like my discretion as to what ends up getting going on this channel. So. With that in mind, just try and take what I present to you with a little bit of a grain of salt. That being said, I did take a lot into account. So the things that I do take into account is the strength of schedule, how they competed last year, and overall, like what their options are, uh, like to throw the ball to, like are they going to be a contender, and all that stuff. So there's a lot being taken into account when I'm doing this. It's not just like, oh, I think that these guys are great. Let's go ahead and put them together. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. So here at number five, you have the GOAT. So I'm going to be going in order from the person that you least likely need to watch out for all the way up to the person that you need to like absolutely hone in on if you want to go ahead and like target them in your drafts, whatever it may be. So first of all, here we have Tom Brady. Tom Brady is without question the greatest football player to ever live. I mean, look how many Super Bowls he has. He has seven Super Bowls. He has seven Super Bowls. He's playing out of retirement now. So for that first bullet point here, he's coming out of retirement. He's finishing off of one of the best seasons. So for that first bullet point here, he's coming out of retirement. And like the whole reason for him to come out of retirement is because he did not end up winning a Super Bowl last season. He actually got knocked out of the playoffs. Um, and it was kind of a disappointment, honestly. A lot of people thought that he was going to be able to go back to the Super Bowl and win again. However, Chris Godwin got hurt. Leonard Fournette got banged up. Um, Mike Evans got hurt a little bit. Gronk is old. You know, like there was just so many things that just did not end well for that season. Um, and so like Tom Brady ended up having to make a decision after about a month of saying that he was retired. He's like, yeah, I'm not actually retired. I want to go ahead and have another go at this thing. So for our second bullet point here, his team is projected to win 11 games a season. I really don't find that too hard to believe, honestly. Tom Brady is one of those quarterbacks that is the difference maker. It doesn't take a plethora of receiving options for him to excel. Um, that being said, though, he does have some star power. You know, he does have Chris Godwin, who will be coming back later half in the season. You do have Mike Evans, who is literally going to get 1,000 yards again this season. He has never gotten below a thousand yards so far in his entire NFL career. And I really don't think that this is going to be the year that that goes without doubt. So you also get to be able to retain Bruce Arians as the head coach. Leonard Fournette's coming off of his best season. So uh, there's just so many things that are on the upside for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that I really don't see Tom Brady struggling at all. And honestly, let's go ahead and jump onto the next bullet point here. This is probably the most glaringly crazy stat that you're going to see but tom brady is coming off of his best season after 21 seasons this guy absolutely dominated last season tom brady threw for 485 completions on a 719 attempts he surpassed 5,000 yards passing for the first time in his nfl career and he had a whopping 43 touchdowns so that being said there was an additional game at the end of the year but i mean this guy was on pace to absolutely shatter every single record um i think that the like chris godwin getting hurt and mike evans getting banged up really slowed him down quite a bit but i mean this guy honestly going on bullet point number six here he definitely got cheated out of the mvp um, I really do think though, I really do think so. I mean, I know that Aaron Rodgers was also having a stellar year, but it should be it should be taken into consideration the fact that Tom Brady had his best season of his entire career. 21 seasons. The guy has won seven Super Bowls across those 20 seasons, and he had his best season last season, and he didn't win the Super Bowl. Or and he didn't win the MVP. I think that that's kind of absurd, honestly. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the bullet point number five. So you know that he's going to be without Chris Godwin for a majority of the season. Chris Godwin, in case you didn't know, did tear his ACL in the latter half of the season. 
In the six games without Chris Godwin on the field, Mike Evans has 34 catches and 458 yards, seven touchdowns. So I really don't think that this is going to be a hindrance on the offense at all. I know that they are going to be without Rob Gronkowski, and they ended up getting rid of O.J. Howard this offseason. Cameron Bray is no slouch at the tight end position. He's definitely more of a blocking tight end. But that being said, I just think that Tom Brady is way too talented in order to not be considered one of the best quarterbacks this upcoming season. So next up on our list here, we have Aaron Rodgers, the guy that actually ended up getting the edge on the MVP race last season against Tom Brady. You know, Aaron Rodgers, in case you didn't know, he is by far the person that I hate the most in the entire NFL. He is super talented, don't get me wrong, but his arrogance and his persona is just so unlikable in my personal opinion. As a Bears fan, I already hate the Green Bay Packers, but Aaron Rodgers is like the perfect villain for that entire franchise. Um, but let's go ahead and look at some of his accolades as to why he might be considered one of the top five quarterbacks for this upcoming season. So first off here, he's on a team that is going to be contending for a Super Bowl. They are projected for 11 wins this season, and that is without Devonta Adams. They went out and they drafted Christian Watson. So I think that that was definitely a bit of a reach at the wide receiver position for what they could have gone ahead and gotten first. Um, but that being said, they definitely have some star power there. They have Alan Lazard, they have Sammy Watkins, like they do have some established talent at the wide receiver helm, but that being said, Aaron Rodgers is going to find a way to win. He's in a division that is mostly rebuilding outside of the Minnesota Vikings, and so going here on the second bullet point, he's got something to prove. You know, a lot of people want to say, oh, is he going to be able to succeed? Is he going to be able to succeed without Devontae Adams? And the real answer is we don't know. Um, he's definitely had at least one premier receiving option throughout his entire NFL career. And this would be like the first time, like his true first test without having that dominant wide receiver one. And it could be a very interesting road ahead for the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers. But I really don't think that that's going to be a deterrent to having Aaron Rodgers win the NFC North this season. Next up here you have, he is the reigning MVP. I mean, it should go without question that Anytime a player comes off of an MVP season, they typically have a little bit of a drop off. But that being said, I really don't see that being the option here. He went ahead, if you look at that last bullet point, he just signed a huge lucrative deal this offseason that secures him in for another four seasons, I believe. He's definitely going to be playing to his max potential. He's one of those guys that even if he's hurt, he wants to win so bad that he'll just take a shot of cortisone and then he'll get back out on the field. Um, we've seen him go through his whole little turf toe, his COVID toe is what they were calling it. Um, he had his calf strain. I mean, he's just, he's the perfect villain. I mean, that's honestly what he is. Looking here at the number four bullet point, he's got the eighth easiest schedule um, so far. So that being said, I mean, even with all these obstacles really not favoring him, he actually does have a pretty easy strength of schedule going into the season. So it's tremendous upside for him. You know, I really think that the Green Bay Packers could be just as good this season as they were last season. And that's saying something given the fact that they were like a 12 win team last season. And then lastly here we have the division is rebuilding and he should definitely take advantage of that. So, I mean, you do have the, the Detroit Lions who really dominated the NFL draft. I'll be talking about that a little bit later on in a future video, but they did dominate the NFL draft, but that is really not going to be at much, but that is really not going to be much of a hindrance on Aaron Rodgers in this NFL season. He's kind of had his way with the Detroit Lions his entire NFL career. The Minnesota Vikings really pose the only threat in the NFC North. And, you know, Chicago is just so bad right now. Um, I, I really don't see Chicago having much of a chance in this division. So Aaron Rodgers, I definitely foresee being one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. However, I think that we are going to start to see a turn of the page into the new era of quarterback. Next up here, we have an auto-generated image of what Russell Wilson will look like in his Denver Broncos uniform. So apologies for that. It does kind of look a little Madden 23-ish, but Russell Wilson is going to be the third guy to watch. So as you can see here by his plethora of Pro Bowl nominations, he actually has been to the Pro Bowl nine times. Uh, he has won a Super Bowl, and he is on a Denver team that is on the up and up. I mean, he's being reunited with his former college teammate, Melvin Gordon. He is on a team that has secured so many weapons, and he finally gets to be able to air the ball out. 
I mean, okay, let's go ahead and just like jump down this list really quick before I go a little too depth. Um, but here for that first one, he's in a very competitive division. Lots of scoring needed to stay relevant. That is literally the epitome of that AFC West. You have the Kansas City Chiefs, you have the Vegas Raiders, and then you also have the Los Angeles Chargers. This this division right here is it's pretty much going to be whoever wins that division is probably going to end up winning the Super Bowl that season. Um, there's just going to be so much scoring going on. Russell Wilson's finally going to get that option to go ahead and cook that we've all wanted to see. He's coming off of Seattle where Seattle was definitely more of a ground and pound type team. And even with that, Russell Wilson was still out there giving it his all. And he was like having an MVP uh, contention type season. He's always been like one of those top five quarterbacks. And now we can finally see what he has to do in the mile high city. So second up here, he has new team who dis. Uh, obviously, this was probably the biggest news of the entire offseason, which is crazy because there was a lot of moves going on this offseason. But there was so many reports going on that Russell Wilson was actually going to stay put in Seattle. That's what he wanted. Um, and then like a week later, you end up seeing him going ahead and getting traded to the Denver Broncos. I think that it was a good decision on both parts, honestly. Um, Denver was desperately in need of a new quarterback and then Seattle was looking to turn the page, go to something else, even though they didn't necessarily want to. He's just like a superly high paid quarterback. And after him getting injured last season, they couldn't justify re-signing him, even though he is probably one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So third up here. All of the receiving threats were locked up this offseason. You got Tim Patrick coming back, Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy. They went ahead and traded away Noah Fant, um, but they do have Alec O as the tight end. They have some of the best offensive talents in the entire NFL, and Russell Wilson is going to spread that ball around. Um, in the future video, I will be talking about who I believe their most dominant receiving threat will be. I'm not going to mention it here, but... Let's just say that I believe Russell Wilson could have easily over 4,500 yards passing this season. Additionally, I also think that Russell Wilson will probably end up having multiple wide receivers over 1,000 yards this season, maybe even potentially have two wide receivers over 10 touchdowns this season. Russell Wilson is going to be cooking in the AFC West. Last, uh, So for our fourth bullet point here, he joins a pass-heavy team finally. I mean... I've kind of already touched on this point quite a bit, but Seattle was definitely hindering his ability to spread the ball around. What they typically would do is like in the beginning half of the season, they would be like, let Russell Wilson go ahead and air it out. And then towards the latter half of the season, they would just go back to that ground and pound team. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Denver ends up adjusting to having a quarterback that's actually competent. Uh, they did very well when they finally had Peyton Manning a couple years back in 2013. But let's just go ahead and say that the Denver Broncos are going to be a team to watch out for. For our fifth bullet point, they do have the ninth hardest schedule, though. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they are playing six of their 17 games in in their division. And as I've touched on it many times already, their division is going to be one of the toughest in the entire NFL. And I, I really think that if he can end up winning the division, which is unlikely, but if he can, then that'll be a true testament. And we could finally see maybe his first MVP season if he does well in that division. And then for our last bullet point here, he's got a pass catching running back duo. Uh, you got Melvante, you know, you got Melvin Gordon, you got Javante Williams, both of which are stellar. They are the double headed dragon in the backfield. They are they can both pass catch like Javante Williams is definitely a little bit younger than Melvin Gordon. Um, so he has a little bit more juice in my personal opinion, but just having so many different options to go off of, especially coming out of the backfield, it just makes Russ Wilson way more deadly through the air. Okay. So for our second quarterback, it might come to a surprise because I know that a lot of people are at this point are going, well, who's number one. I have two options and you probably understand who number one is by this point, but in number two, we have Justin Herbert. So Justin Herbert, in my opinion, is probably one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Definitely one of the best youngest quarterbacks we've ever seen. He won the Rookie of the Year last season, and he was nominated to the Pro Bowl. He was dominant, dominant in the NFL last season. Um, he's in an insanely competitive division, you know, same one as Russell Wilson. So I don't need to beat a dead horse there, but they have so much star power on this team 
also that I really think that Justin Herbert can do whatever he wants. I mean, he's in a very similar situation as Russell Wilson. He's got Keenan Allen. He's got Mike Williams. He's got Joshua Palmer. Um, and that's not even to mention the backfield with Austin Eckler. So I really would like to preface before I go too deep into this. I don't get to touch on it as much as I wanted to, but we did see a game last season where Justin Herbert showed off his legs. He had like 90 yards rushing and everyone's like, wait a minute. I didn't even know that he was that fast or he was that elusive out of the backfield. If we end up getting a good mix between his passing ability, as well as him getting on the ground, he could shatter some records this season. I mean, the guy is actually electric fast at like six, seven. I think he is. He's super tall. And he's got a cannon for an arm, super young, but very smart with the football. And this guy is going to be a problem for many years to come. So for our first bullet point here, insanely competitive division, like I said, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but he is going to be going against some super talented uh, players against the, you know, like Vegas Raiders, Kansas City Chiefs, and the Denver Broncos. For our second bullet point here, we have team is projected to 10 and a half wins this season. I think that that number might be a little bit low. I really think that the Chargers are one of the better teams in that division, at least currently right now. They went ahead and they made the necessary acquisitions to go ahead and beef up that defense, getting Khalil Mack in addition to Joey Bosa. Um, on the offensive side, they've pretty much remained unchanged. And I really believe in Brandon Staley as the head coach. I, I know that he had a, like a bad ending to the season, but all in all, he was that game against the the Raiders was so crazy to watch. It was one of the best games in football last season, and I'm super excited to see what Justin Herbert can do in his year two. In this third option here, you have coming off best season yet, he, but he is still young. So that is without question. I mean, I think that he is probably the best youngest quarterback that we have right now. He's one of those quarterbacks that we know that he can run with the football and he can be very elusive, but he doesn't have to. He can literally throw for 400 yards and zero picks. Like this guy is super smart with the football. He makes some pretty narrow window type throws. And honestly, he just gets the job done. He has a nose for getting the ball into the end zone. And at the end of the game, he's one of those guys that you really want the ball in his hands. Like he's a guy you can trust moving forward. For that number fourth bullet point we have, he has the sixth hardest schedule. Again, that's probably playing a lot into the comp or the division that he's in. Um, but all things being considered, I think that that defense is going to keep them in a lot of games and they have enough star power on the offensive side of the ball to really go into barn burners and come out victorious. That's something that the, the Chargers had really struggled with in years past, being able to, you know, out outscore their opponents who run up the score. In Phillip Rivers' last season as a Charger, I believe they lost like every single overtime game. And as soon as Justin Herbert got there, they changed that number like completely around and they became like a really, really strong contender in the division. Like I said, this guy is a competitor. He's someone you want at the end of the game with the football and he is someone to definitely watch here in this upcoming season. Number five, we have all of the receiving options are returning. So not only do you have Keenan Allen, but you also have Mike Williams who signed a pretty nice contract in the off season. You ended up getting rid of Jared Cook, which I think is actually going to benefit to the team because Jared Cook is super old. Um, and then you also have Austin Eckler who out of the backfield is one of the most dangerous running backs in the NFL. He came off one of his best seasons, mostly because he was able to stay healthy. Um, but Austin Eckler is kind of like Walmart Christian McCaffrey. Um, and I say that pretty lo like loosely because Christian McCaffrey and, and, Austin Eckler are kind of being held to the same standard now, in my opinion. They're both super fast. They both can like deliver a, a really mean hit. And then also fantastic coming out of the backfield and catching passes. So uh, this leads us to our last point here and says entering third year of four year rookie contract. So we are getting pretty close to Justin Herbert having to renegotiate to a, another contract, which whenever a player starts to get close to the end of their contract, they start playing balls of the wall and you see a different type of person come out. Um, I think that if Justin Herbert can at least maintain his last season projection, then he for sure will get a monster deal when that time comes. But that's why I think that he'll be number second. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump over to the first. So number one overall on this list might come to a surprise to you. It might not, but Josh Allen is going to be the guy to watch in this NFL season. 
He has way too many things going for him right now that it just kind of all fits, honestly. Um, so let me go ahead and answer the glaringly obvious question. No Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, no Patrick Mahomes. Um, unfortunately, I just don't feel like Patrick Mahomes is going to do much this season. He came off of a season last season where we were kind of watching him and going, this doesn't look like the same Patrick Mahomes. I don't know what's going on. He's now without Tyreek Hill. He went ahead and got MVS from Green Bay, but I mean, it's MVS. It's basically the same thing that he had with um, like his McCole Hardman and Tyreek Hill. He still has McCole Hardman, no longer has Tyreek Hill. He does have Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey's starting to get a little older now. Um, but I definitely think that Travis Kelsey is going to be one of the best tight ends. Don't get me wrong. Um, we're just trying to temper expectations there. And with the other guys on this list, I, I just don't think that he's going to be able to beat out those other guys. In my personal opinion, you know, he signed that, he signed that crazy contract, 10, 10 year contract that he can afford to take a season off if he wants to. Like last season, he ended up not performing super well until the latter half of the season. Um, and it's going to be a tougher division this season. So I don't I don't necessarily have the faith that Patrick Mahomes is going to be one of these top five quarterbacks in the NFL. Let's just go ahead and table that for another day. Let's talk about Josh Allen here. So for our first bullet point, we have that he is on one of the hottest teams in football. On both sides of the football, they are ranking near the top. I think that last season, Buffalo actually finished with the best defense in the entire NFL. Josh Allen is absolutely no slouch at the quarterback position. He won most improved uh, player last season. He had that crazy playoff game where uh, he threw the touchdowns to Gabriel Davis and they were just going back and forth, back and forth. Absolutely the game of the year last season. Josh Allen is so fun to watch. He, again, just like Justin Herbert, is a young talent that just wants to win and wants to win now. Um, so that all combined with being on a very good team, a talented team, I think that the sky is the limit for Josh Allen. Here for our second, he's on the 12th easiest schedule. So unlike a lot of guys on this list, he actually has the road easiest to succeed moving forward. I think that Josh Allen could easily win that AFC North and I mean, there are some talented teams there. You know, you do have New England, who is starting to take some pretty good shape. You have the Miami Dolphins, who made some pretty drastic moves there. Um, but all things being considered, I I just think that the Buffalo Bills, if they don't do it this year, I don't know what to tell you because they have everything that they need to make it happen. Number three on this on this list now, we have the offense remained unchanged. You know that we went ahead and gotten Stefan Diggs last season, so or was that two seasons ago, something like that. They they now have Stefan Diggs, who's a top three, uh, top five wide receiver, as they have on number five bullet point. Um, Stefan Diggs matched with Gabriel Davis, if he can continue to you know, perform. And then you got Dawson Knox, who was quietly one of the best tight ends last season before getting injured. Dawson Knox and Josh Allen kind of have that chemistry whenever they get inside that 20-yard line. Um, Josh Allen just has a way to spread the ball around to where you really don't know who is going to get the football. It's kind of one of those things where it's just beautiful to watch unfold. Uh, so for number four, you have the quarterback coach getting promoted to offensive coordinator. This can only benefit the system in my personal opinion. It was Ken Dorsey, who was the quarterback coach in Buffalo, who ended up getting promoted to offensive coordinator. You know that Josh Allen and Dorsey are on the same page. So you know moving forward that this is just going to benefit the team instead of hinder it moving forward. Number five, we've already touched on it, but you have Stefan Diggs alongside company. And then for that last bullet point, we have they are a legitimate contender for the Super Bowl. I honestly believe that, that they could actually be the team that gives the AFC West a run for their money for being the person who represents the AFC in the Super Bowl. I really don't see many other teams being able to do that. You know, there's the, the talk that maybe Cincinnati might be able to be that team. Um, but in my personal opinion, I just think that Josh Allen is one of those super talents. He's playing on a different level right now. We just kind of have to sit back and appreciate what we see. But that's going to do it for this list. So recapping here, we have Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, and Josh Allen. So let me go, go ahead and let me know down in the comments as to whether or not you totally agree, disagree, or what you think I totally got right. But I'll catch you in the next one. See you. See you.